What if I told you that some of the world's most prestigious colleges once required their incoming freshmen to strip down and pose for nude photographs? Sounds outrageous, right? Well, buckle up, because today we're uncovering the bizarre and largely unknown tradition of Ivy League colleges taking nude photos of their students. If you're ready to dive into this peculiar piece of history, stick around to unravel the mystery together. Chapter 1 The Origins of the Nude Photo Tradition Our journey takes us back to the late 19th century, an era marked by innovation and change. Dr. Dudley Allen Sargent, a prominent figure in physical education, introduced a cutting-edge method called the Sargent System. This forward-thinking approach aimed to assess students' physical growth and development by juxtaposing their bodies with a standard, idealized physique. Dr. Sargent was convinced that this comparative analysis would help educators pinpoint individual strengths and weaknesses, enabling them to devise tailored fitness programs to boost students' overall health and well-being. His innovative ideas swiftly gained traction, with numerous colleges across the United States incorporating the Sargent system into their physical education curricula. However, it wasn't until the 1940s that the practice of capturing nude photos truly emerged. This peculiar tradition was initiated by Dr. William Herbert Sheldon, an American psychologist and numismatist with a keen interest in physical anthropology. Dr. Sheldon's fascination with the human body led him to explore the relationship between an individual's physique and their inherent temperament and behavior. This ambitious endeavor culminated in the development of somatotyping. Chapter 2 The Concept of Somatotyping Dr. Sheldon's captivating theory posited that a person's body type or somatotype could reveal their personality, behavior, and even forecast their future success. In his research, he identified three primary somatotypes endomorphs, known for their round and soft bodies, were sociable and easygoing mesomorphs, characterized by muscular and athletic frames, were assertive and competitive and ectomorphs, with slender and delicate physiques, were introverted and intellectual. To substantiate his theory, Sheldon needed a vast collection of photographs that showcased the diverse array of body types in the population. Ivy League colleges, intrigued by his work, saw an opportunity to contribute to his research. They decided to integrate nude photography into their standard physical examinations for incoming freshmen, amassing an unparalleled data set for Sheldon's studies. The partnership between Sheldon and these prestigious institutions forged a unique, mutually beneficial relationship. The Ivy League colleges gained access to Sheldon's cutting-edge research and insights, potentially enhancing their understanding of student well-being and personal development. In return, Sheldon obtained the invaluable data he needed to advance his studies and refine his theories. The Ivy League colleges gained access to Sheldon's cutting-edge research and insights, potentially enhancing their understanding of student well-being and personal development. In return, Sheldon obtained the invaluable data he needed to advance his studies and refine his theories. As the practice of photographing nude students continued, it evolved into a well-coordinated process. Incoming freshmen were informed that these photographs would play a crucial role in advancing scientific knowledge and were assured that their images would remain strictly confidential. Chapter 3 The Nude Photo Collection the photographs served as a vital component of Sheldon's research, allowing him to study and compare the diverse range of body types represented in the Ivy League institutions. With each new academic year, thousands of students from renowned universities like Harvard, Yale, and Princeton joined the ranks of those who had participated in this unconventional practice. Students were directed to pose in specific positions for the photographs, with their hands resting on their hips and their feet set apart at a prescribed distance. A metal pin, carefully affixed to their right hip, provided a reference point for standardized measurements. These seemingly innocuous details served to create a uniform data set that would enable Sheldon to analyze and compare the somatotypes of students with greater precision. Despite the assurances of confidentiality, the process of taking the nude photographs was far from discreet. 
students often found themselves in crowded examination rooms, where privacy was scarce and the air was thick with anticipation enemies. Some of the photographed individuals would later become successful professionals, politicians, and celebrities, blissfully unaware of the existence of this intimate visual record. The sheer volume of photographs amassed in Sheldon's collection was staggering. Chapter 4 The Downfall of the Nude Photo Tradition As the years went by, the nude photo tradition began to face mounting scrutiny. While the practice had initially been embraced by both students and faculty as a means to advance scientific knowledge, a growing number of critics started to question the ethical implications of this invasive procedure. The tide of public opinion was slowly turning against the once celebrated custom, and it wouldn't be long before the first cracks in its foundation began to appear. Ironically, it was Dr. Sheldon's own theories that would ultimately serve as the catalyst for the downfall of the nude photo tradition. His bold claims about the correlation between somatotypes and personality traits were beginning to face a barrage of skepticism from the scientific community. Researchers were unable to replicate his findings, casting doubt on the validity of his conclusions and the legitimacy of his work. In light of the mounting criticisms, the partnership between Sheldon and the Ivy League colleges started to fray. As the value of Sheldon's research came into question, the educational institutions that had once enthusiastically supported his endeavors began to distance themselves from his controversial theories. Gradually, the practice of taking nude photographs of incoming freshmen started to wane, and by the late 1960s, it had all but disappeared. Chapter 5 The Aftermath and Legacy The rediscovery of the nude photo tradition in the 1990s shook the foundations of the Ivy League institutions that had once championed Dr. Sheldon's controversial research. In response to the public outcry, the colleges took swift action to rectify the situation. They contacted former students, offering apologies and assurances that the photographs had been destroyed or returned to the subjects, wherever possible. Legal battles ensued, and some schools, like Yale, faced lawsuits from alumni who felt violated and betrayed by the invasive practice. As we reflect on the intriguing legacy of the nude photo tradition, it's essential to recognize the lessons that can be learned from this captivating chapter of academic history. And there you have it guys, the enthralling tale of the nude photo tradition in Ivy League colleges comes to an end, leaving us with a potent cocktail of emotions, intrigue, and valuable lessons. Who would have thought that such a peculiar custom could leave such an indelible mark on the annals of academic history and spark impassioned debates about ethics, privacy, and scientific responsibility? If you enjoyed this deep dive and would like to explore more fascinating stories from the hidden corners of history, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. We'll be back soon with another riveting tale that's sure to pique your curiosity and leave you wanting more.